lots of love about aliquots, which are small portions of something of which we have a lot. So when we have a lot of something, we don't much more than we'd ever want to use in one time, we often split it up into smaller portions we call aliquots. And so we aliquot a bigger thing into a bunch of smaller portions, maybe portions that we would use in a single setting or that we would at least use in fewer settings. And there are multiple reasons to do this, including keeping your sample like fresh, avoiding double dipping, and saving you time if you make like single use ones where they're already pre-measured out or you could save time not having to wait for a whole thing to thaw and things like this. So basically you can think of it kind of like why they make snack size chip bags. Just like every time you open that big bag of chips you're going to make them like staler. Every time you open a sample up, especially if it's like a frozen sample so you're doing a freeze thaw, you're gonna damage the what's in there a little bit. And by having smaller portions, well, now you're going to have to do fewer of those openings, fewer of those free saws. You're introducing things to less oxygen, which could be an issue for if you have DTT or something that's sensitive like that. You don't want to be keeping exposing it to all this oxygen that's going to damage it. And by having smaller portions, then you have fewer times that you're going to have to do that, do that damaging. What's really, really important with aliquoting is when you have things that are going to undergo freeze thaw and things that are sensitive to that. Things like proteins and especially enzymes and competent cells. Um, so like cell stocks, these things are going to be really sensitive. Every time you freeze them, you're basically, if there's water inside of all the molecules and around the molecules. When you freeze it, that water's gonna expand. It's gonna kind of like break the molecules around it. And so you want to avoid all those freeze thaws. And so you can make individually portioned aliquots ahead of time. Sometimes you have way more than it's reasonably feasible to make aliquots of. And so a lot of times with the enzymes and things like this, the competent cells, we wanna make single use portions so that we don't have to, we only have to freeze thaw them a single time. But what happens is that you can easily fill up like a ton of different boxes in your freezer. So what you can do if you're doing like a protein prep and you end up with a ton of it, what I like to do is I save like stock tubes, um, which are basically like one mil portions or something like this. And then I make a bunch of smaller portions that each of those has enough for say one experiment. So I only have to freeze thaw them once. And then once I go through all those tubes, I, I, I thaw the, uh, one of my stock tubes and do the aliquoting of that one. So that saves, um, that saves room in the freezer. Um, and so yeah, so freeze thawing is a big thing um, and this is helpful. Additionally, having those smaller um, portions is gonna take less time to thaw than if you were to thaw a really big thing. There are also times when you want to add something and then you freeze it after you've added it. So for example, this SDS loading dye, we freeze it after we add the DTT because then it's less, or the BME, because then it's less stable. And by making it, we only add the DTT the BME to smaller aliquots and then we freeze these rather than trying to add it to all of this and then freeze all of this um, because the DTT is still going to or the BME is still going to go bad over time and so this way we have smaller portions that we're able to go through before it goes bad. Um, and then we have this whole stock that we can go back to and get more. Speaking of going back to the stock, what, let's talk about like double dipping. Say you have a stock container, so you spend all day making this big solu this solution, and you're like, yes, I got the solution. And now you go to pipette some stuff out of it, and your pipette tip is dirty. And now you've contaminated your entire stock. And so now, basically, if you realize that there's a problem with this, hopefully you realize, um, but now you're gonna have to remake this whole thing. What happens is if you had contaminated just a smaller portion, well, now it's not an issue because you can just get rid of that aliquot and use a new one. And so sometimes if you're having problems um, with you've been using one aliquot a lot, you might want to go and try and using a different aliquot or even going back to your original stock. So you should put the dates on your aliquot so that you know which stock that they came from, and then you can go and you can check the stock to see if something was wrong with that. But if you are continuously going in and out of your stock, then you're much more likely to have problems with your stock because you're going to be contaminating it each time you go in and out. So some things are going to be more sensitive to this, um, to things like the freeze thaw and to things like the contamination. And so for these, you're often going to want to make like single use portions. This can also be helpful if things are sensitive to light. Um, so for example, for our SDS loading dye, we make like bigger portions, typically like one mil aliquots. But for our cyber gold, so the stain that we use to stain for like RNA and DNA, we make single use portions, just like little five microliter portions in these tiny little tubes, and that's enough for one, one time. Um, and this is really, really helpful. You don't have to measure it out um, each time. And importantly, it protects it from having to be exposed to the light a lot. 
and this stuff is frozen in DMSO and it takes a while to thaw and so then each time if you have to thaw this big vial it's going to take some time but if you pre-aliquot it out into those smaller portions well now you've saved yourself time and you don't have to do that measuring um, and so that's another big benefit. So you basically when you're making aliquots think about how many how much you would use in a single setting think about whether it makes sense to have portions that you would just use once, such as in the case of those stains, or whether it's something that you use variable amounts of, such as one of these protein dyes, which are more stable than those other um, dyes and less sensitive to light and things like this. So although we make smaller portions, we can still make like one mil portions, um, and then we have enough to do a bunch of experiments, no matter how much we, how much we, how many gels we're running that day and things like this, we have a bit more wriggle room than if you make those single use portions. But for those single use portions, those are really great for things like competent cells. Those are really sensitive, and so you just wanna have the, the amount of cells that you're gonna add to each time. Um, things like a protein prep, you might not know exactly how much you're gonna use, but just kind of like have enough to do what typical experiments you would do. Um, things like this. And so just kind of like think ahead. Um, repeater pipettes are really great for helping make all those aliquots out. Um, you can also make aliquots in like PCR strips using a multi-channel if you have a bunch of something. Um, remember to label them, put that date so you can go back to the stock, um, and then go back to that stock when you need to make some more aliquots. And so you don't have to aliquot it all out at once, um, but you can then go back to the stock fewer times each time then you can go and aliquot them out. So. I hope that helps you understand why we aliquot, what aliquoting actually is. We use this term all the time, um, and it's not really that used that much outside of science, but it's a really, really helpful term. So you can think about next time you're at a party and there's like a punch bowl or something, you can go like, oh yeah, I'll like aliquot our friends out some drinks. Um, and so, yeah, hope that was helpful.